Let's use the design recipe to build an animation. Let's animate a rocket that starts at the ground level and then flies straight up vertically. Okay, so uh, you might remember from before that one way to build an animation is to build a function that takes a number as input and returns an image. And the idea is that successive numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on, would be fed to this function. And then the function will produce images that are shown one after another to make an uh, the illusion of something moving. Okay, so uh, let's write such a function. Let's design such a function. Um, we need to give the function a name. Let's call it a, a, a place rocket, let's say, because it's going to put the rocket at the right place at the... Uh, on, on, on the scene. Okay. Um, now, one interesting thing about this signature that we just wrote is that it doesn't require us to write any data definitions. The word number is a, a well-known word. The word image is a well-known word. And so we don't really need to write any data definitions and we are already done with step one of the design uh, recipe. So we can continue with step two. We are done with the signature. This is a signature. Again, it's important to refer back to the signature as we go because we better make sure that our function takes a number as input and, re and returns an image. And uh, let's write a purpose. The purpose of this function is um, to put a rocket on the thing uh, so that the rocket flies up, I guess. All right, and let's write a header. The header is going to include the name for the input. The input is a number, uh, which is kind of like the, the frame number in a movie, or you can think of it as time. So I'm going to call it T. It starts at zero and keeps increasing one after, like zero, one, two, three, four. Okay. All right. So that's a header. Now, um, the most important part, perhaps, about making an animation is to make the function examples. Okay. Remember that the function examples are going to be about what possible inputs the function could be and what the function should return in response to each of these inputs. Okay. So the beginning of a good function example will be, I'm going to write this as a check expect. So uh, zero is a number that the function would get. In fact, this is going to be the first number that the function gets because when the animation starts to figure out what initial picture to put on the screen, the computer is going to pass zero to place rocket. And then whatever image place rocket returns will be the very first image that we see on the screen. Okay. So according to the signature, we better make an image. Okay. So what image should it be? In other words, what should the first image of the animation be? We actually need to make that image in order to finish this example. And that's a good thing. It's forcing us to think about the movie and think about what the first image of that movie should be. Okay, we better make that uh, um, appear. Okay, so we need to make that image. And in order to make that image, I highly recommend that you do it in a separate tab. Because we're in the middle of designing a function here, but the process of making an image might involve more experimentation. So let's make a new tab so that I could just build this image inside this new tab without being uh, distracted by everything else in the other tab. Okay, so the one thing I will need to do is uh, the image library because I'm going to have to combine two images, the rocket and the background image, into uh, a, a combined image. Okay, so that's something that the image library is good for. Okay. Um, let's, uh, let's define what the rocket should look like. So I'm going to define something called rocket sprite. Uh, I could uh, cobble together a rocket using like triangles and rectangles, but I could also just copy an image from the web. Okay, so if you look at the textbook, it actually has a rocket image in there. Okay, you don't have to use this one, you can use whatever you like. Uh, you can also build your own, but this is a rocket sprite that I happen to uh, be able to use. Uh, let's also define what a background is. The background we can uh, build using the function empty sync that the image library provides. Uh, it just takes two inputs, a width and the height of the sync. So this is going to build us um, a nice backdrop. 
Okay, uh, so we could see what it has built us. This is the background. It has you know a black border around the white uh, middle. And here's rocket sprite. That's just the same thing that we just copied from the web. Okay. So those are the two things. Now, what we actually want the animation to begin with is the rocket should be kind of at the bottom in the middle of the background. Okay. So how do we combine these two images? Well, there's a function called place image that's hand handy for this. Place image is a function that takes four inputs. The first input is the image we want to put, like the rocket sprite. The second input is the horizontal coordinate where we want to put it. Okay, so this is measured on uh, the horizontal coordinate, it's an x coordinate, so it's measured from left to right. The left edge of the image is zero, and the right edge is, well, here is 200 because the thing is 200 wide. Okay, so we're gonna put it in the middle, so we're gonna put 100, that's gonna be in, in the middle. Okay, so that's x. The third input to this place image function is the y coordinate where we want the image to be. Okay, so the y coordinate is measured from the top down. Okay, so this is a kind of the opposite of what you might be used to from math. Um, so top is zero, and the bottom of the image is 200. Okay, so if we want it to be at the bottom, we can put 200. Okay, and finally, the fourth and final input that the place image function needs is what to put the rocket sprite on, and that's the background. So I'm going to give background as the fourth input. Okay, so that's what we have. This is okay, but uh, you know um, it's actually burying the rocket halfway into the ground because you know uh, 200 means the center of the rocket is at the bottom of the background. Okay, so there's different ways to fix this. Uh, one way we can just play with the the y coordinate. You know, if we make it 190, that's going to be a little bit higher. Um, not quite high enough yet, I think. So maybe we could give it, um, let's try 185. Okay, that looks good. So we have successively built the first frame of our animation, the initial picture of our anim animation. Okay, so now that we have built this, we could come back to the tab where we started and actually put it there. Here's my place image call that I uh, incorporate as the expected output of our first example. Okay. Now, in order for this call to make sense, I better copy the dependencies in from the other tab. So I also need all these definitions. Okay, so I'm just gonna put it here. Well, maybe for the require line, I'm gonna put it at the very top of the file, okay, just to get it out of the way. Okay, oops, here. Okay, so that's my uh, first example. Okay, we also need some other examples, like what about a f a f a some seconds into the animation? What should the screen look like then? Well, for example, we had frame zero here. What about frame 100? That's a few seconds into the movie. Okay, remember there's 28 frames per second. Uh, so, well, if we want the rocket to fly up, that's what the purpose statement says, then we better make the y coordinate smaller, right? Because remember, when we make the y coordinate smaller, the rocket actually flies up. So here's something that's sort of convenient uh, for arithmetic. Suppose we change 185 to 85, okay? then the rocket flies up. Um, like more than halfway up the screen. So I think that's a, that's a good thing to put. So let's say that for frame 100, we want this image, okay, where the rocket appears um, more than halfway up the, the, the scene. Okay, so these, this is our second example for the function. All right, so you can see how writing an example can be an involved process because you might need to uh, work to get the expected output right, but that's really worth it. Okay, this is the time when you actually want to do it. Okay, this is kind of like you know before you want to shoot a movie, you first get your photography correct. Okay, so let's move on to step four, the function template. 
Um, so to write the template, let's start with a header. And again, we can just look at what inputs we have and give ourselves a reminder to use those inputs. Here, there's only one input, it's t. So instead of just dot, 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 you know, we like to put t inside dots, just to remind myself that uh, we have t to use. Okay. Moving on, let's look at the function definition. Okay, finally, it's time to write the function definition. And a good starting point is a template. Now, this is going to be one of many design processes where in order to write the function definition, we're going to be kind of weaving together the template and the examples. Okay, we're going to be weaving together the template and the examples. What do I mean by weaving together? Well, we already have the definition starting with a template. But now let's look at the examples. If you look at the expected outputs in the examples, look at the two expected outputs, they are very similar. Okay, There's actually very little that's different between them. There's some difference, but not a lot. Okay, If you look at these two expected outputs, they both say place image, they both say rocket sprite, they both say 100. The Y coordinate is a little different. It's 185 in the first example, 85 in the second example, and then they both say background. Okay. So what we need to do is to take what the examples share, take what they are similar, how they're similar, and put that into the definition. Okay. So all these are similar except for the Y coordinate. So we need to do something about the Y coordinate, but before we do that, Let's just first take what's similar and then put it in the definition. I'm going to do that. Okay. And now what we need to do is to figure out how to fill in the Y coordinate part because this part changes. Sometimes it's 185, sometimes it's 85. Okay. So how can we put 185 and 85 into the function definition. Well, we need to use the input t. That's what the template reminds us to do. So somehow we have to use the input t to sometimes get 185 and sometimes get 85. If t is 0, we want 185. If t is 100, then we want 85. Okay, how can we do that? Well, it seems that when t increases, we want the y coordinate to decrease. That makes sense because, again, the y coordinate is measured from top down. So if you want the rocket to fly up, then the y coordinate has to become a smaller number. Okay, so you can use the formula 185 minus t. We could subtract t from 185 so that when t is 0, we get 185, and when t is 100, we get 85. Okay, so that's our function definition. Let's see if it works. That's step 6, testing. Uh, as before, I'm going to comment out the header and comment out the template. And then let's see what happens when I hit run. Ah, both tests passed. Okay, so that's nice, both tests passed, but it will also be nice to see the actual animation. So to do that, I have to use the universe library. Okay, so let me go to the file and require the universe library. And then I can animate the place rocket function. Here's what we get. Aha, uh -huh. looks good. All right, that's it.